Hey guys, I want to see, make sure everything is set up and everybody got started. Let me know if you could hear me um, and we'll get started. So you are on the, in the Elite Personal Chef Facebook group. I am Stephanie Heller and let me just check if this is working. There we are. Okay, cool. So I'm going to pause it and close this and let me see if I can see your questions. Okay, good. So if anybody's here, pop on and say hi. Tell me where you are call, um, hanging out from, what city, what state, what country, um, and say hi. So today, the topic that, it's like a little bit of a kitchen sink topic that I wanted to talk about because there's so many good questions popping up in the group and everyone has such good answers and opinions and I wanted to kind of just expand on that because a lot of people are going through the same things and it is, you know, very natural that we are here to help each other. So competition. Competition is a part of life. And when you're in business for yourself, it is inevitable that eventually you will have people that you feel like you're in competition with or that catch your eye that are doing the same thing as you. Maybe it's so closely related that you feel like uneasy about it that they could easily take your clients or that you're going after the same client pool and maybe there's not enough. So I want to talk about that today. How you handle your competition is the most important thing. So your personal view of competition will dictate kind of how you interact with people when this happens and how it makes you feel if it you know sidetracks you and takes you out of the game or you don't care and you feel good about it so we're going to talk about that i also want to talk about last um monday when i did the live stream which was actually on the facebook page we talked about five key steps to turn your website into a cash machine and if some of you know me and know my story my website for my business ripe personal chef is literally how i make 99 percent of my income so the website and a web presence is really important it is how we get consistent leads into the business every single week every single day it's how we can rely on our income week after week, month after month. It's how I can even project out a whole year. And this is all related to the website. So there's a lot of components that go into that. I talked about five last week. You can check out the video on the Elite Personal Chef Facebook page, which it says Elite Personal Chef by Stephanie Heller. So that's how you know you're on the right page. Go to the video tabs and it will be there. So let me know if anybody has popped on. Say hi, tell me if you could hear me. I am not sure how the sound is and what's going on. Let me see. Okay, I think we sound good. Let me just check. Perfect. Okay. Let me keep this up so I can see questions. I don't know if I can. Okay, we'll just keep going. So the next thing is we'll talk about the number one tip that I have, and this wasn't included in last week's, of how to get a higher Google ranking, which means when people search for personal chef in your area, like Scottsdale personal chef or Houston personal chef, you want to be coming up really high. When I say really high, I mean one, two, or three. If people have to scroll down or go through 10, 20 personal chefs or catering listings before they get to you, they will likely lose interest and move on. So being one, two, or three is seriously vital. And there's ways to do Google AdWords to pay for it and to 
you know, get in the sponsored part and there's ways to do it organically. So this way that I'm going to talk about is what I call organic. It's basically almost free. There's a little investment. We'll go over that. And then I want to, I'll give you some resources about how you're going to go about that. Then we're going to talk about health coaches. And I want to welcome a lot of new people to the group who are pursuing a little different avenue of personal chefing. Either way, you're cooking in people's homes, you're helping them. So I want to welcome them and we'll talk about how to integrate services for your current business. And then we're going to do a little website review for David Boyd, who had contacted me privately and is doing an amazing job on his website. Just going to give a little pointers. I love doing this because I'm obsessed with my website. I know it's the key to making consistent income as a personal chef. So I'm more than happy to share some review and tips with him. So we'll go into that on the end. I'll give you his website and then we can follow along together and you can make notes and see if anything applies to you. So if you see me looking over here, um, I have notes over here. If you have any questions, um, write them down. You can put them in the comment box. And I'm going to type a question now. Just make sure. Can everyone hear me well? And then if you could just do like a yes or no, that'd be perfect. Okay, guys. Let's get started with the first thing. Competition. So this all started, I mean, I think of competition a lot, but I want to go to the post quickly in the group. Um, somebody did a post on what happens when people are contacting you from a competitor, like other chefs wanting to either pretend that they are looking for service and they're really not, or they are fishing for information like, hi, I'm planning a party for 12. Can you send me your menus on this, this, and this? And it's not a real inquiry. That's one way of a competitor trying to interact with you. It could be they're trying to get you off your game. They're trying to get information from you to use in their business, or they're just doing like a kind of comparison or something. Um, either way, it can get really annoying, and I totally understand that. I'm still trying to find the post of who is doing that, but... um who posted that question, but here's what I think on competition and you will let me know what you think and what, you know, your stance is on it because that will like portray how you interact with people. So basically my view of competition is in terms of my personal chef business, I do not believe in it. I don't care if people are doing the same exact thing I'm doing literally right next door. I don't care if they're using the same menus. I don't care if they're providing the same service, like the, you know, standard four by four. None of this matters to me and my income and my mission. It literally doesn't. And I know I'm standing at a place eight years down the road, so it's a little different. But even in the beginning, and I'm telling you truthfully, when people would People have absolutely called me fishing for information, pretending they were somebody else, um, giving me fake inquiries to get um, pricing, contracts, everything. Um, I don't care. I would honestly rather you just call me and say, hey, I'm a personal chef here and I saw your website and I want some help. Can you send me your contract so I could look at it? Or... I'm doing a dinner party with a Mexican food and I see you're based in the Southwest. Can I see your sample menus? That's really different than somebody pretending to be somebody else, calling from a blocked phone, um, giving you weird information to like make you think it's a real inquiry, but it's not. I mean, that is just childish and stupid. So I see how it's annoying, but the way I view competition is this. You are unique and your services are unique. So even if somebody tries, let me just move this a tiny. Even if somebody tries to copy you, 
or do exactly what you're doing, they will not have the same result as you because they're not you. What makes you you and you unique is what will make you rich. You copying off somebody else will not make you rich or independent or have time freedom or be able to have a really successful business. It just doesn't work that way. So if you're coming from a place of lack and you think there are not enough clients for me, then that is what is going to show up for you and competition will be a huge problem for you because when you see people pop up doing the same thing you do, you're going to be like, they're taking clients away from me. Whereas if you're coming from a place of abundance, meaning there are more than enough clients for me, you will never think somebody starting the same business is going to take away from you. In fact, it really adds from you to you. And we'll talk about that too. The competition is really only existing in your mind. It doesn't exist in the marketplace. It's different because we're not selling like a physical product that can completely be replicated and um, compared to each other. Me selling my four by four is going to be completely different than the same personal chef selling the same thing two blocks away from me because it's a personal service. A real person is providing it. I have unique experiences and abilities. So does that person. Doesn't matter if we charge the same thing. Different clients are going to be attracted to each of us. So taking away the fact that competition exists in your mind and not like in the real world has helped me a lot. Um, it's important to realize that this takes time to get to. And it's not like you're just going to wake up one day and feel like, you know, everything is great and there's no competition. It takes time to build and just getting started with your head on in this way will be really, really helpful. So next thing, in order to really start to believe this, you need to gather evidence from the outside world, which means what are the real statistics that how many personal shops can really survive and thrive in one area? I'll keep using my location as an example, but you know, apply this to you, obviously. If you talk about, if I think about my target market in Scottsdale, there are literally over a hundred thousand people who fall into that category of who've outlined the people I want to cook for, their age, their hobbies, their income, where they live, especially location. And, and for enough personal chefs to service 100,000 people, there would literally need to be thousands of us. There are not thousands and thousands of personal chefs in this area. If you think about how many clients you can really even take on as a single owner operator at one time, maybe, just maybe, you could take on 10 clients at a time. And that's with them rotating. If you, maybe 10 to 12. If you have one person working for you, you could maybe take on 10 to 15. So then the business changes. But my point is, there's more than enough clients that competition doesn't matter. So I've shown myself that in the real world and I have, I want to see if this is working. Hang on one second. Cause I'm getting a message that this might not be working right. Let's see if anybody is viewing this. Okay. Perfect. All right. I see a couple people jumping on. Good. Okay, I got a message that it wasn't working, but now it is. Okay, so if you're on here, tell me hi, tell me you could hear me, and we'll keep going. How do I close this? How do I close this? Okay, perfect. So we're talking about competition, getting evidence in the real world that you have more than enough clients in your area to service that somebody sprouting up right next to you doesn't matter. Now the other side of it is when you're checking out other personal chefs and I want to see what's going on in my community. I want to see, you know, who's still in business, what people are offering. 
um, who is who's doing what? I don't know. I don't think that's like really wrong. And I stumble upon somebody that is extremely close to what I'm doing, not even in location, but like in look and feel of the website, in the services they offer, in their bio, their pictures, everything. I get a little like, oh my gosh, what is she doing? And I came upon that about like six months ago or eight months ago. And how I saw it was like I said, the ranking is really important. So I often check my ranking to make sure and then see if there's something I need to do about it or just observe it. And I would put in um, my actual company name, Ripe Personal Chef, and her ad would pop up over this. So I thought she was paying Google AdWords my company, you know, string of words to get ranked for or to um, get paid for. And I have no proof of this or I have no idea how Google sets up what ads go on where. But I was like, if somebody's searching for ripe, why is she coming up? And that like triggered me. But then I thought, who cares? We have so many good leads. We have so many great clients. I have so many nice people that want to work for this company. And I have nothing to complain about that I didn't even care. And I actually told um, my manager to call her and network with her and have a coffee with her and just see what she's doing. Because I thought, let's find out what she's doing. Maybe she can come work for us or, you know, whatever. Okay, good. Alex, you can hear me. Perfect. Um, so that's still in the works. But I know it, it stings a little when it comes up. So... Let me know if anything like that has happened to you guys. Have you had somebody where you're researching and their website comes up and it looks and sounds exactly like yours or what's kind of been your experience with competition? I'm interested to know. So if a competitor is you feel like stealing clients or that usually can't happen unless it's somebody who used to work for you or used to be your partner or, you know, maybe worked with you on a couple of jobs. That's a little different than somebody kind of in the community having their own business. They don't, they don't have your client list. They don't know who you work for. So they wouldn't really steal them. A client may stop using your service and start using them. And that's, you know, there's nothing wrong with that. But, um, if a competitor is stealing clients, meaning somebody who's worked for you and then they started their own business or something, then you want to have like what they call a non-compete in order so it deters them from doing that. Or you have an agreement with them where you, maybe you used to work together and you service these clients and I service these clients and you don't cross over. Um, that can happen. What I like to do for all of these is just have open communication. If I hear that somebody who used to work for me is working for another client or I'm sensing it or you know what's going on really, just I would call them up directly and say, hey, is this going on? And let them explain it. And maybe there's an agreement that we can come to. That's always the first thing that we like doing. Okay, perfect. Next is... If you see somebody like poaching your menus or your blog topics or basically just copying your stuff in general, the first thing I like to do is take it as a compliment. This means you've arrived. People think you are good enough to copy and they like what they see, so they, they're going to take a piece of it or they're going to take a part of it. And what I like to do is thank them and bless them. I that it's hard work in the beginning because at first you're going to be pissed. You're going to be like, "Oh my god, that's my exact menu or that looks like my logo or that looks like my template." Whatever it is, get to a point where you can bless them and thank them because it means you've made it. It means you are big enough and high enough and on somebody's radar enough to be copied. So the next thing you could do after you've blessed them is you can confront them um, verbally either by phone and then by email and say, hey, your logo looks exactly like mine or 
this actually happened to me. I opened a local magazine and there was an ad at the bottom that was an ad that I ran literally four years ago with somebody else's business name on it, no logo. They just changed the name. It was literally the same ad and I called her. First I called the magazine and I was like, who the hell published this? Like I ran an ad in here and you're running the same ad with somebody else's name on it because maybe it was an error. Anyway, I wound up calling the girl who did it and she called me right back, which I thought was really professional. And she said, I had somebody else make the ad. I had no idea. And I'm like, that's 100% bullshit. If you just tell the truth, like we can all move on. And after like five or 10 minutes, I was talking to her. She was just basically like, I literally have no clients and I'm really desperate and I didn't know what to do. And I'm really sorry. And I'm glad that she told me the truth because then like, I can feel for her and I can help her, but with her like kind of lying and just being weird about it, it was very awkward. So basically I, I blessed her and I said, good luck. If this ad brings you money, then use it. Like there's nothing, you know, I don't care. I don't believe in competition. She has no clients. That's why she copied it. There's no competition. So there are some ways to deal with that. Um, like I said before, your creativity and your unique menus and pages on your website and your blog topics and your experience is what's going to make you rich, not copying somebody else's. If it's, and you don't even know if it's working for them. So if you take something off somebody's site that you don't even know if they're making any money, that might not even work. Um, for people that are riding your coattails, what I mean by this is, I don't know. I said, this is like a social media thing. So if you're in other groups and you're doing postings or you're in conversations and you're getting known and raising the vibration and getting clients and providing a good service, people may hop on your posts and start to make comments offering their service. And this could be like in food groups. If you're just in conversation about I don't know, vegan menus and you're offering some insight and stuff. And then you see the same person keep popping up on all these threads of, Hey, check out my vegan menus or buy my service or go to my website. That's annoying. I call that riding your coattails because you're not really doing anything original or adding value. You're just hopping on somebody else's thing to advertise yourself. And that actually just happened to me on my elite personal chef page. And what we do is we delete the comments right away and we bless them. We say sending love delete because you're not going to just jump on and advertise yourself on other people's posts on other people's hard work. That's it's really spamming and there's a fine line for that and people see through it and they don't like it. So if you find yourself doing that just because you don't know how to get in the conversation, that's different. And we can talk about that if that's an issue. But if you are doing it to like take somebody else down or to be negative or to, you know, just save money on advertising because you're commenting on somebody else's ad, all of that is ridiculous. It's not going to make you money and it's not going to get you clients. Concentrate on what's unique for you and what you can bring to the table and then people will want to buy from you and hang out with you. Okay, perfect. So I do not know if anybody is even here, but maybe it's a weird time for people, but I'm going to keep going because this, this might help some people. Actually, let me see if I can share this. How do I share it in a group? Okay, we'll just stay here for now. All right, perfect. Wants to connect with you. All right, let's keep going. We'll figure this out. We might be doing lives on the page because I feel like this might not be getting in front of the right people, but that's okay. Okay, we're talking about people riding your coattails. Make them an ally. 
they need help. They probably need help from you. They can work for you. Use it for your advantage. Create like a chef's networking group. Um, have them do research for you, with you, whatever it is, use it to your advantage. Um, I was really pissed off and like took it off guard when this person was jumping on all of my posts and pushing his company. And I really didn't like it because it is such a low grade way to interact socially that maybe I overreacted and I could have like gotten into a conversation about it, but I, I just feel bad for people like that and I think they should move on. But um, if you have something like that going on in your business, maybe reach out to them and they could be an ally. Maybe they could be somebody who you refer jobs to. Comp instead of thinking of it as competition, think of it as how I can make this person my ally. Maybe they can refer jobs to you or each other. Maybe they can help you with other advertising and networking opportunities. You can do events together. Maybe they are in contact with staff that you also need for your business or ingredients or different are in touch with different areas of a different target market that you want to get into. So try to keep an open mind about that. Um, competition. It's, it's never going to go away. You don't want it to because if you're the only game in town, which you think can be to your advantage, it winds up not being because it is, it's not as fun and it means you live in a really small area with not a lot of stuff going on. So that's not that good for your business, but just embrace it. That's my key on that. Okay. Any questions on what I just talked about? If you are Watching this on a replay, you can also pop in your questions now, and I will come back and circle to them. Let's talk about getting your website ranked higher. So, again, last week we talked about my five steps to turning your website into a cash machine. You can check that out on the page. And it this builds on it because this is a very 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 important piece that I touched on a little there but I want you to be able to implement in your business and let me just tag somebody because we'll see if that is coming up and he can pop on okay sounds good to see you. Yes, David Boyd will pop on. Okay, we'll talk about that in a second. We'll go over to his website. So here's here's my theories on this, and it's worked very, very well in my business, and I think it has to do tremendously with how high I'm ranked. The first thing is when you reg okay, I want you to register your business on search engine listings. So what this means is Google business has a separate page where you can register your business to be found online. When you register your business, if you have a physical location, it does not have to be a restaurant, a store, anything attached to it. And I'll tell you how to do that in a minute. You will be ranked on Google maps and that pulls you up higher in local searches. So what it is really is, Google prefers businesses to have addresses and roots in the community. And because personal chefs are a local service based business, meaning I'm in Scottsdale, I provide chef services in Scottsdale. They want to see that I have something going on there and that I'm just not a clearinghouse located in Michigan. Cause a lot of other business services do that like locksmiths or, um, I don't know, locksmiths is a big one. They'll have clearing houses in one city and they will not actually have locations in that city. And it's it creates a mismatch on Google and they do not get ranked as high. So what I did when I first started, first, first started is I rented a business mailbox. There's tons of these all around. You can do it at the post office. You can rent a mailbox per um, usually every six months or a year is the contract. It might be less. You can go to like a UPS store, you can go to Mailbox Plus, whatever you have by you, and set up a business mailbox, which means all of your business mail will be sent there, and you get an address. 
to send stuff to. You can have your business credit card stuff go there. You can have any magazines that you order for your business, you know, like Bon Appetit, whatever. Um, any books that you order for your business, just like start to get mail there. So it's a real active mailbox. And do it, commit to it for six months to a year. This isn't something you just do for a month so you can sign up with Google and then let it go. You need to really build on this because Google then, once you register this on Google Business, they send you a postcard to the actual mailbox to confirm that this is where your business is receiving mail and is located. You do not have to own a kitchen. You don't have to rent commercial kitchen space. You don't have to have a restaurant. You don't have to have a catering spot. I'm not talking about any of that. This is talking about renting a mailbox only. Use this address for everything. When you order business cards, have them ship there. When you set up your website URL, have that be, you know, the address for your business credit card. Get it going as something you believe in that's related to your business and Google will in turn believe that. So I also wrote a list of some other resources where you can register your website online. This means that when people search for certain keywords, you will come up. And we need to, you need to be on a couple different platforms. It's obviously Google is king. Um, let me make sure this is still working. I think it's working. It's reconnecting. Okay, we might have had a break in this. Okay, let's keep going. Some resources for this are, like I said, Google is king, obviously, but you need to be on other places just to provide more social proof. So you're going to look up Google business listings. You're going to look up Yahoo business listing. Bing is also one. Yellowpages.com. When you set up your Yelp review page, you're going to add this address on it because that is important as well. Yelp pulls from a map also, because location is so important on Yelp. When you're on your app and you're hitting restaurants in the area, you wanna see what comes up right by you. When people type in personal chef Houston, you wanna come up right away. So do that on Yelp. Everywhere you're gonna register your business online, you're gonna include the address of the mailbox the phone number and an email, the name of the business as well. Um, one more thing about the business address. Make sure you're getting a mailbox in the location of where your target client lives. I specifically must, must, must have the mailbox in Scottsdale and I wanted a specific zip code to be honest as well. Um, to help with my ranking because I knew my target clients lived there. So when they go on Google and it has predetermined search things under the radar for them because it knows your location, my business comes up even higher because I'm in that exact zip code. So remember that. Don't like go get a mailbox in a cheaper location if your target clients are in another location. You want to be where they are. They want to know that you service that area and that you're in that area. Okay, so this process is not an overnight thing. You're gonna be working on your ranking web presence over time. It, I don't know what the um, calculation, if it's every 30 days or every 60 days, they reorder content according to what people are clicking on, what string of words are important to people, um, what other businesses are popping up on the maps and you want to stay relevant and you do this with blog posts that are uh, posted um, all the time. You do it with current information and you do it with search words and getting registered on these websites. Again, this is not an overnight thing. This is something that builds over time. You can't, you're not going to do this in one month later, you're going to have a, a number one ranking. This takes years, to be honest. It at least takes six months. And after six months, you might see a kick in it, like 
when you type in Houston personal chef, instead of coming up 15, you're coming up five. You want to keep going. And other things will pull that up, and we'll talk about that another time. But getting a mailbox and having a physical location attached to your business listing is really, really important. Let me just see if anyone has any questions. Anything else popping on here? Okay, good. Let me know if this makes sense to everybody. Let me know if you have any questions. This is not an overnight thing. Don't, don't try to take the easy way out and pay a company to do SEO and search ranking for you. You're going to be really disappointed because it's a long game. It's like the stock market. You, you don't just buy one thing and sell it two days later. A, a company is going to do the same thing. They're going to need time to get your results up. So you can start working on it yourself right now. Let's do that, do that, do that. Let me know how it turns out. Health coaches, I wanted to give like a separate welcome to you guys. I am making an effort to attract a lot more health coaches, wellness professionals, um, holistic nutritionists, everyone in that genre who is providing a professional service that is complementary to personal chef services, which means you have the same clients that could and also want personal chef services in their home or dinner parties or stuff like that. So I know there's like a bunch of new health coaches in the group. We have, I mean, close to 950 people, which I'm really excited about. And pairing those services together are so good for a lot of reasons. And I wanted to open this up to everybody because you can see different things that will work for your company. Um, and it's not just, you need to go to culinary school, you need to work in a restaurant, and then you can maybe become a personal chef if you're lucky. There's a lot of different roads that is going to lead you to what you want. And usually all of our end goal and our desire is to help people through our food and to make good money on it and to make our own schedule and to have our own life and be our own boss. It's usually what everybody wants. I'm assuming you probably want some of those too. So traditionally health coaching would pass, I mean, there's so many variations, but you would usually offer a coaching package, which got people toward their health goals and identified them. It might have meal plans. It might have um, shopping lists. You might do testing, like um, nutritional testing, blood tests, stuff like that. If you are a naturopath or something. And what happens is you give your client all these amazing recommendations and they either don't know what to do with it because they have no idea or they try it themselves a little bit and it doesn't really work out or they try like a processed meal delivery or like frozen food from the store and it's full of processed junk, which is like exactly what you don't want them to do. So I just thought it's the perfect pairing. And like I said, you do not have to go to culinary school. You do not have to work in a restaurant. You have to know how to help people through your food and you have to know how to set up the services correctly to offer it. That's the only things you need to know how to do. Your health coaching background and your desire to help people is already drawing in those people. They need somebody to prepare the food. So now you can do it. So let me know if anybody has any questions on that. You can always start small. It doesn't have to be a huge rollout of services. You can offer weekly meal service to some current clients as a tryout. Um, you could do practice cook days there where they pay for the food. Um, you do the service for free and just see how it goes. See how it affects their lives. That's the main thing because then you're also selling a full service solution. You're not just saying, here's a menu plan, go get healthy. I'll talk to you next week. You're saying, I'm going to go to the grocery store with you. We're going to do a one hour lesson. And then you're going to come away with this. The next week when they talk to you, they're going to feel so much better because they've had education. They've had guidance. They've changed their lives. They've done something different and they feel better. 
So you're putting all the pieces together for them. So you can do it to current clients, offer it as an add-on to packages they currently have. Um, if you're thinking, if you have cooking experience, you feel um, very confident in this and you want to go big, you can start offering it on your website under a different tab or complementary to this, like it, you know, on the same services page, but just under it. So a lot of things you could do. The most important thing is to start because you're going into a new realm where people might not know you do this or they might not know how beneficial it is to them. So just start on that. Let me know how it goes. Let me know if you have any questions. Let me check over here. Okay, perfect. Health coaches, welcome. If you have any, please post questions. I mean, we're getting so many good questions in here. Um, I cannot tell you how many people contact me telling me they love this group. They're so excited for it. And it's really a place that they can talk as an adult, you know, in this industry and not um, wonder about like if their question is stupid or, you know, who's going to really help them. Everybody here wants to help. So ask questions. We love that. So let me just take the next five or 10 minutes and we're going to do a quick website review. I do not know if David was able to jump on. It's hard to tell. I actually can't see if anybody's on, but we're going to do it and then we're going to, we'll do, we'll watch the replay. So I'm going to type in his website so you can follow along. Down to cuisine. I don't know if that's it. Hold on. All right. First of all, when I type it in, to Google, and this is excellent. It says on the side, and I'll, I don't know if I could show you this on the screen. It says on the map, it's brought up his listing, which is perfect. This is exactly what we want. And he has one Google review, which is excellent. You can also start getting Google reviews at the same time as your um, Yelp reviews because Google wants to see you're playing with them too. They don't want to be left out. Okay, perfect. So I'm going to click on the website and then I'm going to look on my phone about the email that he sent to look through just for one second. And then we'll all take a look at his site. And if anybody is having questions with their site or where stuff should be ordered, what should go on what page, you can send me that. Okay. Wait, let's see if I could read this quickly without. Okay. Okay. I'm going to just basically read his email. Okay, I'm redoing my website as of right now, and I had some suggestions from people at the USPCA about making my homepage shorter and sweeter with some bullet points about exactly what to do. Um, about exactly what I do is not clearly described in the page on there, so I'd love to get your opinion. Okay, we'll talk about your homepage. Perfect. They also suggested I put a headshot. Let me go over to the page put a headshot on my business card and then maybe a picture of food on the back. What are your thoughts on a headshot in the front with the info as compared to a picture of one of your dishes? I have some shots my wife took of one of my dinners, just zoomed in. Okay, perfect. So let's talk about those two things. Let's jump over to the website first and we'll look at the home page. Okay. First of all, I love this name. Okay, let me go back up. Okay, it says Greater Seattle Area at the bottom. Puget Sound Personal Chefs. Tell me what that is. I wish I wish you were on this so we could do it. Maybe we'll you'll circle back and be able to answer that. So is the top, I think you made the top part shorter already, but right now it could be a tiny bit shorter. 
and it doesn't have to have that many links in it. You have one, two, three, four links in the text. What you want to have people do, this is always just my opinion, on the homepage is they want to read a couple of lines and they want to make sure they're in the right place. So in terms of linking to other stuff, you want to just make them kind of use the navigation bar at the top. Um, asking the question, why hire a personal chef? They already know why they're searching for you. We want to use the why in the language on the website. So the why is going to be in services. It's going to be on the homepage. But they already know why they're looking for a personal chef. They need more time. They want to be with loved ones. Exactly what you're saying. They need, um, they don't want to think about what to prepare. They don't want to go food shopping, all of that. So instead of asking it as a question, try to maybe paint a picture of what their life is going to be like when they use your service. So I think something on mine, Karen, I'll get to that in one second, but good question. Um, what they're doing online is they want to know that they're in the right place. And you're going to do that by painting a picture of what their life is going to be like when they hire you. Something about the smell of their home. Something like um, the 10 extra hours a week you get to spend um, hanging out with your kids, reading, working out, can't wait to get to that favorite yoga class. Now you have the right time. Take out your Lululemon leggings because hot yoga can get on your calendar because I came to your house today. Something very specific that draws them into the story of their own life. And it lets them know that you understand them and that you can help them. Okay, so that would be the first part. Second part, you didn't, wouldn't you like the peace of mind knowing... Okay, highest quality ingredients. All of this is important to your target client, which is excellent. Highest quality organic ingredients, um, customized dinners, and the expertise of you. Excellent. Just try to maybe weave it in a story instead of questions, and it should be a tiny bit shorter. And then, do you have an, you have an about page? So that part can either stay or go. That's up to you. And private dinners, prices, okay. Pictures are great. Let me come down, excellent. Your phone number, your email, good. If you can, I mean, I know you can, change that from a Gmail to David at Down to Earth Cuisine. Okay, farm to table. The other thing is when you're saying all organic ingredients and farm to table, these are words that are used very liberally these days so even though you think your your client might not be educated enough to know the difference or they they won't be able to catch you or whatever it is make sure this is stuff you're really doing if you are not definitely 100% not going to a farm at all to source anything change the language if um most of your services are not organic ingredients, meaning your clients want conventional food from a, you know, a regular food store. You can write that organic is you know, an option and that you provide it. Just make sure you're you know, following through on what you're saying. Okay, these quotes are good at your service. Tell me a little about your needs so I can begin the creation process. Perfect. You could say something even more specific. What services are you interested in? How can I help you make, save 10 hours a week? What services do you are you interested in? Okay, you have your hashtag. Perfect. Oh, you do have David at Down to Earth Cuisine. Maybe just make sure that matches the one up there. Greater Seattle area. I want you to be more specific on this. I want to see specific neighborhoods, cities, housing developments, um, gated communities. I want to see the names of these. People, again, want to recognize that they're in the right place. All in all, this is great. I love the name, love the logo. 
there's a I think too many social icons up at the top one two three four five six seven people are not gonna look at all seven they might look at one they might look at two choose the two or three most important to you you being on all of those platforms is possibly dividing your time and dividing your reach because not not everyone is on all those platforms like celebrities are on all those platforms like Kim Kardashian is on all all seven platforms pick the two or three that are the most important to you and your ideal client and focus on that okay any questions let me answer hold on let me answer Karen's question how do you go about getting Google reviews perfect you need to set up a Google business page I talked about a little earlier I don't know if you were on you can always watch the replay on that and then it'll say in a section review my business and you can send that link to people so Google again wants to know you're active and paying attention you guys can see that bear in the background <laughs> that's funny um Google reviews are excellent and here's here's a couple of reasons why I, I mean it's good for you and it's it's not that great for for other things but I'll just tell you the truth you don't have to be a verified user of the actual personal chef service to write the review so when you're first starting and you're building up your momentum your parents your husband your wife your co-workers, your friends, they can all technically review you as long as you make it sound, you know, good. Maybe, And you have really cooked for them so they can give real experience and a review. Like many years ago, I went to New York where I grew up and cooked for my best friend and her three best friends who I also know. And they could legit they didn't pay for it we were we were doing it as fun but they could legitimately review me because they had the meal and it was awesome and it was like a dinner party so google reviews are good for that because you don't have to verify them you do not have to be a paid client to do it um whereas yelp they have an algorithm that is looking at certain strings of words and your profile and things you're saying and the date of it and this and that the, where they decide if you are a legitimate reviewer google plus you that that you know bar is not there to get over um angie's list is similar you technically have to have been a client of the company and what was the other one? Thumbtack, I believe, lets you review if you are not a client as well. So let me know if that's helped you. I suggest building both. I would say Yelp is the most important. Google Plus would be the second. Okay. What else? Let's go back to David's site for one second. We'll just go through a few more pages and then we will call it a day okay we talked about social icons at the top if anybody's following along i'm at down to earth cuisine.com i'm on menu pages perfect i like the picture at the top note these are just an example excellent perfect this is what i would call a composed menu meaning you write the, what's in it and then under it you're giving a description perfect People love this for a dinner party. The only thing I might, let me see if you, have, you might have it on the other page, hang on. Okay, so when you go back to menu, you could state, okay, you could do it either way. You could do either a dinner party page, a dinner party services menu, and then you could do a weekly services menu or you could say this is an example of both personally on a weekly service nobody is ever going to order spanish charred octopus so i might draw a distinction like this to me looks like a dinner party menu it looks like an awesome dinner party menu 
But for weekly people, they might be looking for something different. Um, lots of things that they recognize and can say and that they're used to eating. You'd be surprised. People don't even know what polenta is or creme fraiche. You know, we know these things off the top of our head, but a lot of my weekly people have no clue. So you might think of separating those. The menu itself looks great. Pickled items. If this is something you specialize in, I think that's amazing. Or, you know, for health benefits, whatever. I love that. If you make this on your own, if you say um, every month it's made fresh, well, you know, explain a little why you're offering pickled items. All right, good. Let's go to services. First picture is you, your stuff in the kitchen. The only thing I would say about the first picture, I like it. I like that people get to see what they're actually going to get. We're, I'm like a weird stickler for this. The labels that we use on containers have to be printed, meaning they go through the printer and they're in like that. It's not that you have bad handwriting or anything like that. It's just that people love the look and the feel of these nice ordered things that are all matching that have um their own i don't know I, I, it's it's more eye pleasing to people if it's printed and that the containers all match i see you're using glass which might be preferred for your clients make sure they have a whole matching set or or just switch the picture you know take a beauty shot what we call and make sure it just like all matches Take out this what is a personal chef. We talked about that a little bit. They know what it is. Even if they technically don't know what it is, they don't care. They want to solve their problem, which is I have no time and I don't know what to cook and I'm fucking hungry. I don't care what a personal chef is. I love the we do everything for you. Tell them exactly what you do. Maybe you're going into detail. Okay. You don't below. Tell them what you're doing. We're making a customized menu. We're going food shopping for you. We come to your home, prepare the food there. It takes me three to four hours. Here's what you come away with. Okay. Whether you want food like grandma, latest trends, we've got you covered. That's cute. Okay. And also, you mentioned this in the email. People like bullet points, like short things of, we do the food shopping. I bring all the pots and pans. I cook everything on site. It takes me three to four hours, blah, blah, blah. Okay, a week's worth of meals. Groceries not included. Perfect. Five entrees with two portions is $3.75. Five entrees with four portions. Okay, five entrees with six. We, we can go into more detail about this. I would offer only two options right here with prices next to it. And I would like to hear from you, which is your most popular, which do people um, come back and book all the time? Because you really focus on one or two, and then you can build out variations from there. People are going to look at this, and they're not going to know what they want because they don't know, unless they've had a personal chef before. All you want is to then be interested, you want them to see the price, and you want them to get on the phone with you. Then you're going to make a tailored um, specific service package for them. Um, also include, you know, how much time it takes, who it's good for, meaning single professionals, um, couples with kids, large families, they want to be able to see themselves in it. Five entrees with six portions each, that's a lot of food. That to me is like a family of four to five or more people. Also, what's included in an entree? For us, an entree means a protein, a vegetable, and a starch. For you, it could mean something different. Let them know. Let them know in a bullet point, here's what's included in an entree. You get five entrees, each have six portions for about 30 meals for the week. Private dinners. You could leave it on the same page. You could do a different page. Perfect. This is good. It's too, I would just take off too many, there's too many options. 
give only two prices. If you could do a three course starting at 85, and then you could do, you know, the four course is 100. It's not enough of a price difference for people to make a distinction. Um, just choose, I would choose two out of those. Again, this is just my opinion. You could do whatever you want. And I know it's like, weird because you're not on here but I'm just giving like feedback and it might help others but it's really excellent work you you've done a ton of work on here it looks really good um I like that you put pricing tell me what's included in each course is course one an appetizer course two is a salad course three is the main what's included in the main is it a protein vegetable and a starch are you doing a la carte everything um is dessert a course or it's included? Um, people probably have no idea what a six course menu even looks like. Usually we're used to seeing a three or a four, maybe a five. Um, if you're doing more of a tapas or a tasting or something, just make a distinction because here people are all just looking at the price. They're saying, why on earth am I gonna pay $200 a person? I don't even know what it includes. Let's just do the 85. Really good, but I like it. Okay, let's go to about. Okay, good. I like the pictures of you. Excellent. You in a chef's coat. It's clean. It's nice. You're in a nice kitchen. And your USPCA. Love it. Because that adds credibility. What would I... Here's what I like. This is what I coach people on on their bios. People want, again to see themselves in you. They want to know that you can help them. Start Try to tell it in a story instead of a resume or saying, I've done this, this, and this. They don't care that you've done this, this, and this. They're more cared about that you traveled to Italy on study abroad and you had homemade pasta for the first time and it was amazing and then you wanted to go to La Cordon Bleu. That's more interesting than laying off a resume get into the story of you a little bit and why you want to help people so much through your food experiences in your life that have brought you to this point of down to earth um personal chef service why you chose that name that would be a great part to put in here good about us let's do the blog fall is coming good Okay, you're gonna probably add to this. I sound like a broken record, but tell a story. A, a recipe is fine because you wanna showcase your craft and you probably did this at a dinner party and it looks great. But include it with the story. I just did this dinner party for a guy's golf weekend or a 60th birthday party. My clients also had this on the menu, but I wanted to share this recipe with you because they loved it so much. It was so easy to make, blah, blah, blah. Make it more of a story. This, you also want your blog to be ranked on Google for information people are searching from. People might be searching for a salmon dish, and this might come up, but they might be searching for a menu at a 60th birthday party, and then that would come up even more. Um, tie your blog post to events in the community, time-based things. I think I said that in the last video. This is a good start. It's a good picture. Tell me more of a story. Let's just click on this for a second. Okay. Reviews. Okay, you have a link for checkout on Yelp. I think. I think it kind of popped away. Oh, there it is. Okay, good. You put the plug in here from Yelp. And Facebook together. Excellent. Tell me how you did this. So here's what he did under reviews. This is excellent. I think you have a plugin that is pulling your reviews from Yelp and from Facebook and from some other thing. What is site review? I don't know what that is. 
onto here, which is great. But the only one that looks fishy is the top two where they're not saying anything and it's just their name. Again, people want to read the story. Warning, long review ahead. David is fantastic. That's excellent. Um, we did our company holiday party. Perfect. The more they can describe it, then people will be like, let me get on the phone with him. All right, contact. Tell me about, okay, we talked about this. So this just pops you to back to this page. Perfect. So all in all, amazing work. This is excellent, David. Really good work. Um, you could, I could tell you put a ton of time into this, a ton of effort. It will pay off. Um, you just have to keep going. Maybe do some of the suggestions that I had, some that you got from your group. Just keep moving forward with it. Keep improving with it. It's excellent. Like as, as a prospective client, if I landed on this, I'd be happy. I would think I know this guy knows what he's doing. It just has to be a little bit more clear and you're well on your way. Just make sure, and if you could put this on the top, instead of greater Seattle area, put in specific neighborhoods, specific developments, instead of maybe the um, social icons, you could do three, two or three social icons and then put your service areas up there. Um, my last point would be the contact thing. If you're getting people contacting you directly through here, meaning from the phone and your email, and you want to build on that momentum, you could also use like an online scheduler, which is something called Time Trade, or there's a million of them. Um, Calendly, Acuity Scheduling, where there's a link on your website and people could book a call directly with you. And they get to answer some questions, like you can ask anything, like how they found you, what service you're interested in. That could help a lot with getting people committed and getting people on the phone with you. But excellent work. Okay, we talked about a lot today. I've been on a lot of time. We talked about competition. What you think of competition is really important. What you bring to the table, how you interact with competition um, is something that you can use for your advantage in your business. Don't think it's something negative. The number one tip to get your website ranked higher on Google, tie it to a physical location, a mailbox, not a restaurant, not a commercial kitchen. Don't email me and say, do I need to rent a commercial kitchen for this? No, you don't. That's retarded. That's crazy. Get a mailbox and then register your business on all of the resources I gave you. Health coaches, welcome to the group. I am excited to see this partnership, what you guys come up with, what you need help with. Let me know. And um, I hope you guys learned something. I hope you guys enjoyed this. And I will see you soon. Bye.